Hello. Hi there. Faye Bryant here with another daily devotion. Today we're going to look at Romans 5 5. We're going to talk about hope without disappointment. Hmm. Before we get started, though, let me introduce myself. I'm Faye Bryant. I'm an author, coach, and speaker who helps people just like you escape the lies of the enemy, live into God's truth, and build a better life and develop a legacy that you're willing to leave behind. Isn't that what we all want? To build a life and leave a legacy that is worthy of our calling? Yes. I have resources and opportunities available for you. If you will visit faybryant.com, you can check those out. You can even sign up for a free 15-minute get-together with you and me so we can talk about what it is that you need the most and whether or not I can help you with it. All right? If nothing else, we can have a quick coffee break together, right? Sounds good. Go right there, faybryant.com. Now, thank you for joining me. Be sure and share this so others can get the word too. And listen, we're going to love this. We're going to have fun today. Hope without disappointment. Hope without disappointment. This hope, the scripture starts out. Let me read that scripture first. Romans 5.5. 5, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Awesome. Let's talk. This hope, it says. What hope are we talking about here? Paul was writing to the believers in Rome. His previous words were about rejoicing about being brought into a place of undeserved privilege by Jesus, but also rejoicing when we run into problems and trials. He said that those build our endurance and our endurance develops our character and our character develops our confident hope and this hope. How many times have you had a hope and didn't see it come to fruition? As a kid, I hoped for all kinds of things for Christmas, but the budget didn't work out for that to happen. As an adult, I've hoped for big and small things only to see them not happen. Disappointment, sadness, despair, despondency. That kind of disappointment makes it hard to hope again, doesn't it? But God. God's promises are real. They are true. They don't disappoint because they happen. And it's been my experience that when his promises are fulfilled, the sense of joy and excitement are off the charts because his way is to overwhelm us with his goodness, mercy, and grace. To trust in this today, believer. God loves you dearly. He has given you the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with love, his love, the love that never ends. The trials and problems will come. That's life. When they do, look for how they will build your endurance and develop your character. Choose to see each problem or trial as the opportunity for God to do something amazing in and for you. That's really something to rejoice about. Coffee, Bible, journal. Oh my goodness, how often have we hoped for things and seen them not happen, not come true? Well, what do we do? Well, we get sad. We get angry. We stop believing. Hmm. But in this scripture, we see that we understand, when we understand how dearly God loves us, we will have hope that does not disappoint because we'll be hoping in him. We won't be hoping in that new car or that bicycle or the diamond ring or the vacation in the Bahamas or whatever. We will be trusting in God for hope that is eternal. It has eternal measure and it has eternal ramifications. That hope will not disappoint. Will not disappoint. When we recognize 
that God has given us the Holy Spirit to live within us, to guide us, instruct us, to rebuke us and correct us, then we will know, we will understand his love even better. And we will be able to trust in all that he has promised in his book. And that, that hope will not disappoint. Will not disappoint. Oh, my friend, I hope that you are already trusting in him and reading his promises and hoping in him so that you will have this one hope, this major hope, this eternal hope that will never, ever disappoint you. And if you're not, let's start. Let's start. There are all kinds of places you can look up promises of God. Google, duck, duck, go, pick your, pick your search engine, but go and look for promises of God and read through those and understand that these are things that you can trust. These are promises you can hope in because they will come true. They are a place, God is the place, the place where you can place your hope and know that you will never be disappointed in it. Yes, you can put your trust and your hope in him thinking, okay, God, I, I need that house in that neighborhood, in that city where, and it's way out of your budget and way out of range and it's, it's way out. Now, God might decide to give that to you, but then again, he may not. He may expect you to be grateful for the house you're in. I don't know, but we have to understand that God has promised that he would provide for our needs. So if you're in need of a house, he's going to provide one for you. It may not be this mansion in the best part of town. It may be a little tiny house out in the country. Who knows? I don't, but we have to understand that this hope that we're talking about here that Paul wrote about in Romans is the hope that is found in Jesus. It's the hope of rescue from sin. It's the hope of eternal life. It's the hope of joy unspeakable. It's the hope of rescue. It's the hope of life. And with that hope, you will not be disappointed. You will not. You will not. I know it seems weird, but I believe in you. I believe that you can start putting this kind of trust in God. You can start having this kind of hope and you will ace it. Yes, you will. I believe in you. But oh, my friend, better than me believing in you is that God believes in you. He does. And he is for you. And my friend, oh, goodness, believer, if God is for you, Nothing and no one can ever be against you. Trust in that. Trust in that. Thank you for joining me, for looking at the scriptures and seeing how they apply to our everyday walking around right here, right now lives. I appreciate you doing it. And listen, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, would you be so kind as to hit the button? Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure you hit the bell so you get notifications when these go live. And until next time, go wherever God leads, do whatever God says, and be who God made you to be. I'm Faye Bryant. Bye.